This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. The Air Force spy turned radio personality. Marty White on this edition of Conversations. For over 40 years, Marty White has been talking on the radio. 35 of those spent at radio stations in Northwest Florida. His conversational style of broadcasting has worked well across an array of formats, from contemporary hit music station WJOQ100 to news and personality station WCOA. Marty White has always attracted a solid listener following. But he is best known as host of the Hometown Morning Show on country music radio station WXBM. For 20 plus years, Marty White was a constant in the coveted morning drive slot. His relatability made him an audience favorite and a rating success. In 2014, WXBM rebranded as Nash FM, at which time Marty and his partner, Lindsay Marie, said goodbye to 4 a.m. wake-up calls and set up shop in the afternoon. The same personality-driven broadcast can now be heard weekday afternoons from 3 until 7. We're pleased to welcome an old friend to Conversations, Marty White. My friend, good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you, too. Thanks for coming on. And I appreciate you asking. I appreciate the consideration and the time. It's nice. Well, you've been around for a long time on the air, and people have seen you and heard you, and yeah. you've been so involved in the community. We're glad to kind of get, get the behind-the-scenes story here. Well, I appreciate it. I'm kind of curious. What got you into radio? How did you start, and how old were you? Uh, right out of high school. I was the uh, student government president at Tate High School. Okay. And uh, at that time, uh, I called the local Friday night games, high school football. Oh, football. Well, microphone, you know. Yeah. And uh, from there, I got out of school, and Daddy said, what you going to do? And I said, well, I think I want to do this radio thing. And he knew a guy named Jim Mitchell over at WXBM, worked out at Kim Strand or Monsanto, and worked weekends over there. And he brought me over. I worked some PSAs and did some weather. And the next weekend, Bird Maples hired me at a buck sixty-five, <laughs> working six to midnight. Big money. Big money. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And where did you go from there? Uh, remember WVIX six ten AM? I can't say that I do. Back in those days, this is seventy-three. Uh, there were two stations in town. Q one hundred was just coming up. COA was around, but BSR and uh, VIX they were competitors. And I went over there and worked for J Dave Johnson for a while. Okay. Working middays in sports. Okay. Now, I first start very briefly, though. I, I remembered you primarily when you were working at WJOQ 100. And right. at the time, people don't remember, that was kind of the, the top 40 or yeah. what you'd refer to as contemporary hit music or whatever. And so t how did you get on there? How did that come about? Uh, that was after I got back from the service. I, left, uh, I went back to WXBM after VIX, went to service. I was a spy for four years. <laughs> for the Air Force and uh, worked uh, a Farts Radio and TV over there in Italy and Japan. Came back and uh, went at NVY. Okay. Working afternoons. Okay. And wanted to get over to COA and Q because I knew that's where I could make a little money. And to me, they were the best in town. Right. And uh, I went over there in 80 as a copywriter. Okay. Writing commercials. Okay. It wasn't until uh, 83 or so till I got on the air. Started doing that? mornings. Okay, so you were doing the morning show there, and now while you were there, you were created. You created yeah. a character, that Billy, became, Bob. Billy Bob. Billy Bob was nuts. Tell me about it. Billy Bob was crazy. Uh, Chuck Smith had the afternoon show, and I'd go in and uh, we just voice a little two and a half minute deal, run at five ten every day, one time a day, and he'd put it on his show on Q one hundred, and I wasn't on the air except for that, and people loved him. Uh, we had sound effect. Well, there he is. Yep. He, he's nuts. <laughs> That's a rope hanging on the front of a van. And uh, somebody gave me the flight suit. A guy who was in the service gave me the bomber jacket. And that's an old skull cap they used to wear out at Kim Strand to keep their ears warm. And I uh, put a letter on it and embroidered the back. And a friend of mine, Jan Smith, gave me that. That's a silk scarf. Wound up in a little boy's hand who was sick one day. And those combat boots I got on came from when I spent my time in the service. But I'd get on that thing and I'd hold on that rope and I'd just dance through the parades. And people love that idiot. <laughs> and then uh, we just did that once a day. We had um, a Stearman sound effect of an old, you know, nine-cylinder biplane. Right. And I'd buzz the Bay Bridge, and people would be looking around, trying to find this fool, <laughs> calling the radio station. <laughs> so finally, we had to put him in costume, and we put him in costume and put him out. Yeah, because uh, he was doing was fun, like traffic reports every afternoon, right? He was ace traffic reporter, yeah. yeah. But more, everybody knew him. Yeah. He was on two and a half minutes one time a day. Yeah. It's crazy. What, what do you think it was about that character that related so well to the audience? You put on a pair of Foster Grants, and you can be anybody. Yeah. And that's what it was. Uh, it's just fun. That's Why fun. did you stop doing it? 
Why? Uh, he was good with the ladies. <laughs> you know, we did that for a few years, and I would shoot, man. I flew with the blues with him, and uh, uh, the Chippendales came in town, dance contest. I was the MC. People were stuffing money. And then I fell in love okay. with Donna, see? Uh -huh. And uh, the first time I tried to go do a gig with the Bob, I just took him out of the suitcase, put him on, and I came back, and I said, that's it. He's done. <laughs> Hanging him up. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't what it was, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he couldn't be who he was. Right. Being married, he doesn't found a good woman. Over here. <laughs> That's right. But I, I put it. The suit still fits. I put it on every once in a while for a parade or something. But uh, that was fun. I mean, that's what radio was all about. Get in there and have fun with it. And if you could put a face to it, even better. Yeah. That was uh, the business has changed a lot over the years, hasn't? Uh, yeah. How, 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 what, what's the biggest change you've noticed? Corporate. 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 Yeah. Uh, corporate radio. And I'm going to be careful what I say because I'm still under contract. But uh, the local is going away. Mm -hmm. And to me, the reason they put that stick on WCOA, on the San Carlos back in 1926, was so they could tell everybody around the community what was going on. Right. That's the way I think radio is or should be. Uh, you take your local out of it, especially in your mornings, right. and you've done a disservice to the community. Now, you can try to interject little pieces here and there, but it's not the same as having what we had for over 20 years at right. WXBM. Right. It seems to me... How, that, how did I do on that? That ought to keep me working, huh? Oh, I think so. I think yeah. so. And, 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 and I mean, it, it's a fact, and it's something that's been discussed, uh, you know, to a large degree in the media right. as, as the local goes away, because so much of the national content you can get anywhere. Sure you can. You know, and... and but you need to know where that wreck is. Yes. You need to know if you can get around it. And with me, I've always had an edge because I'm from here. I grew up here. I know this town like the back of my hand. So if there's a, a wreck over there, you know, Brankus and Lakeview, I know where it is. I can tell you how to get around it. If it's out there in Beulah, mm -hmm. you know, I can tell you how to get around it. Those sorts of things. Plus, I know the town. I know the history. I know the events. It's my town. Right. It's my town. Yeah. That makes a difference, I think. And I think that's what's been a huge part of what success I've had is I'm just a regular old boy with a microphone trying to say what you would say if you had the mic in your hand. Right. Tell yeah. me about how you got to XBM. You were at Q100, like say, for a long time. and, and uh, That came about in, I think, 93. It was 93. I'd worked a couple of years with Luke McCoy over at WOW 107. That was fun. Luke was always... I met Luke when I was in high school. I went out to do some PSAs when I was out at Tate. I met Luke McCoy, and I listened to him every morning. Um, so that was a you know, hoot to work with Luke. Kind of like working with your dad, because he's almost as old as my dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was many a times he'd say, you know, you and I need to meet on the front porch whenever the show is <laughs> going, Yeah, okay, buddy, whatever. You know. But we worked, we worked pretty good together for a couple of three years. And then uh, they told us we needed to leave, so we left. <laughs> <laughs> it was an amicable split. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they were amicable and you split, right? Yeah, I went to... Uh, I went to WCOA working afternoons doing that Pensacola Speaks things for a couple of weeks, and that wasn't going to work out for me. Um, and something happened over at WXBM, and Lou Mahachek called me. I said, come see me tomorrow morning, so I did. And he hired me on the spot. And um, I got rid of my 280Z and bought me a truck. <laughs> Been driving a truck ever since. I was going to ask you that, because people always ask about radio personalities. What are you there for? Do you, is, do you really enjoy the music you play, or is it a job and you're more personality driven. Does it matter to you the type of music you play? I wouldn't play rap. I mean, you wouldn't hire me for rap. Right. There's not much of it I couldn't play, but uh, I don't care. Uh, country's fine. Today's country's a lot different than what I like. I like the old Merle George. Right. You know, I like uh, Dave Dudley. I mean, I like good country music. And again, I have to watch what I say because I'm still in the contract, but uh, y'all know. Today's country music is different than Still yesterday's different. country music. But they're dealing with their different demographics. I'll be 60 years old here long, before long. I've moved on. Right. We're not buying records. The young people are buying records. Well, they're not buying records. I dated myself. They're downloading so much these days. Right. And what CDs they do buy, they're buying what's being cranked out of Nashville these days. Yeah. So it's changed. Yeah. But I can play anything. As long as you let me talk. Yeah. Let me put, get some personality in there. Right. What about the artist, as you've met the artist over the years? What, what's the biggest changes you've seen with the artists themselves from a personality standpoint? I'll be honest with you. Uh, I don't get real excited. I never have. <clears throat> they put their britches on just like you and I do. 
Uh, most of the country artists I've met have been fairly decent folks, usually. And y'all don't see this because, you know, you're not backstage, but uh, you have to deal with the road manager. And they're usually not some of the nicest folks. Some of them are. Mm -hmm. Most of them are like, you know, I'm very important. I said, no, you're not. You're not even saying. He sings. Right. Let me talk to him. Right. Well, you can't talk to him. Fine. We play his records, you know. But uh, the artists themselves, uh, the regular old folks trying to make a living, and some of them made a bunch of it. Yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. George Strait, I shook his hand. So what? Big deal. Yeah. Toby Keith was in a towel in the back of the place, you know, in front of ladies. I didn't think that was a good idea. <laughs> Bro. Uh, Kenny Chesney, when he was first starting, nicest kid you want to meet. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. And George Jones is just, uh, you know, I didn't get to shake his hand, but I was right there by him. I like old George. Yeah. I miss George. Yeah. Well, those were the days, weren't they? Country yeah. music totally different than what it was now. Yeah, yeah. but I, I met a few, but I'm, I just that, that didn't trip that my trigger. That didn't float your boat. No. Nah, what, really. what, what do you enjoy most about the job? Uh, right now, it's teaching my partner. She's been with me almost three years. Uh, Lindsay Marie, she is from Birmingham, but she grew up here and went to Pace. And it's just a dream she always had, just like you and I when we were kids. Yeah. And she got an opportunity, and uh, she's done well. Yeah. She's. Uh, I'd like to have her ready to if she would like to do this on her own when, I, when I'm done. But uh, that's been the most fun. Um, at this point, after 40 some odd years, I'm stacking it away so I can go fishing <laughs> and hunting. Take me back to her, interesting, did she just audition for the job? Did I hear that? I mean, how did she come yeah. about getting the job? We put the word out through the trades and everything that we were looking for somebody to do mornings. And, uh, Lord, I mean, you got people from all over the country, from Seattle to D.C. to San Fran, uh, St. Louis. Most of them want to talk about body parts, which we don't do in this market. Right. You know, they want to be nasty. It's, there's a place for it, but it ain't here. And this little lady was the first one who sent us uh, an audition. And I listened to her, and then I went back to the computer and rolled it up, and I said, well, she's presentable, too. She's cute as a bug. But she had the personality and the dynamics I thought I could work with. And uh, I thought there was something there, and I still do. I'm proud of her. She's done good. Yeah. She's done good. What's it like, though, working with someone who's so much younger than you are? It's actually really good. Uh, she's got that fresh take on so many things that you and I might look at different. Um, she's got a great memory, which is good. I rarely tell her anything twice. <laughs> and she can work all this phone stuff that I can. I still got a flip phone. <laughs> uh, so anytime I see something, I do. I can take a picture. I send it to her. I call her my archivist okay. in case we want to use it. But... Uh, She's fun. She's got a little boy that's fixed to be a year old. And um, she's, she's been fun to watch grow. That's and that's, that's been, at this point, about the most fun. I mean, I've reached the goals I wanted to reach yeah. in this business. Yeah. I have. I've been lucky. This town's been good to me. Yeah. You, you go back to what you were saying there for a second. I wanted to ask you about this. You were talking about these radio personalities who want to talk about body parts and the, the whole shock jock thing yeah. came about here 20 or some odd years ago. What, what do you think about that whole situation? If you, can't, if you can't turn the radio on in the car with your youngins, there's something wrong. That's the way I look at it. And uh, we've been complimented over the years. Don't mind listening to you going down the road because I know I trust you. That's basically it. It's harder. We was talking to Bill Ingvall the other day. He was up at the Wind Creek in Atmore, and uh, I complimented him on keeping a clean act. And I said, I think it's harder to do. And he said, absolutely it's harder to do. It's more work. Anybody can say a cuss word or something nasty and get a laugh. Yeah. Evidently, lots of them are doing it. Yeah. It just ain't me. Yeah. Not in this town. The Baptists would be all over me. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't be. Well, and, and, and you know, I, I, I think about that, the, the whole thing. What's the key to being able to communicate to the maybe the 12-year-old who's in the car with his mom and he, she's taking him to school? There, there, there's something to be able to communicate with that 12 year old and at the same time make it interesting for the mom. What's what's the goal there? What's the I don't know. That's a good question uh, It's not hard for me to put myself back in that 12 year old spot. Mm -hmm. I don't believe I ever did grow up right. uh, I know what mom's going through when Don and I had our son I mean then that gives you a brand new perspective too. there stuff I never could talk about on the air before then I could yeah, I've seen him grow. Yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, It's just a talent good Lord bless me with I reckon uh, that's about the only way I can explain it, but it's, it's been fun. You know, I've always thought that there are people who, who can do a couple of things in broadcasting really well. There are people who can do 
news really well. Maybe there are people who are, are good disc jockeys. And then I think there's a select group of folks who, I like to call them broadcasters. Yeah. And, and, and I think about on the national level, I think of Bob Costas as one. He can do great interviews. He can call a play-by-play, -play, you know, whatever the situation may be. Always thought of you like that. Appreciate that. Because I, I know over the years you've, you've, you've been a disc jockey. You've, I think you've done some news along the way and interviews mm -hmm. and sports and things of that nature. A little TV here and there. A little television here and there. Yeah. What's the key to being a broadcaster? What makes somebody a broadcaster as opposed to a disc jockey, as opposed to, to a newsreader? Versatility. You've got to be able to uh, not be scared, jump out there. I can handle that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, show it to me. How long does it need to be? I'll get it done. Cutting a commercial, standing in front of a camera. This is not my, I'm a radio guy, but I can do the TV stuff. Right. Versatility. And, and the key, I think, I wish to Lord, I could go to D.C. and tell some of these idiots up here to talk how to speak. And you know what I'm going to say. Quit speaking like you're reading. Read like you talk. If somebody can do that in this business, there's your conversationalist. Right. You know, a little inflection. I mean it. I'm happy. I'm not happy. Right. Uh, versatility, though, is the answer to your question. Take it and run with it. Don't be scared. And being well-rounded and informed, I would imagine, makes a big difference. Well, yeah, and well-read. Well-read's not bad. I read, I don't know, a couple, three hours every day. I always say if you don't learn something today, you might as well stay in the bed. Yeah. Learn something, and in our business, we're lucky enough to get to share that. We're just trying to pop, pop triggers out there. Right. You know, hope you're listening to this. If you're not, let's try this. Right. And at the same time, take care of your community. We got the uh, open house at Molina Fire Department this weekend, you know. They're doing this out on the beach. Make sure everybody's in touch at the same time. Just kind of keep it moving. Yeah. What's it like? People probably, you, you obviously don't walk in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and just go on the air a couple of minutes before there's preparation involved. And I've worked yeah. with you in the past, and I know you're quite uh, you gotta be prepared. adamant about your preparation. Take me through what a day is like getting ready for a show. Uh, generally, I'm on the computer by, well, it could be 6.30, whenever I get up. I'll just scan through some stuff. I'll go back about 10 o'clock, then I'll go back and read some stuff. And then I go in at 1 or 1.30. And uh, generally, I'm ready in about a half hour. Then I'll take what I've got out back, and by myself, I'll uh, go through what we need. I'll line it all up. We come in with a legal page every day, and it's usually got anywhere from uh, 18 to 20 items on there. We may use them all. We may not. But it's not that hard. Once you've done it, you get your routine. As long as you know what you're talking about when you go on, right. that's key. Otherwise, you look like a fool. But that comes back to the well-read. Yeah. And once you go on the air, how much listener interaction do you have as far as listeners calling in on the phones and things of that nature? It varies. It was more obviously when we were, we were working mornings. Uh, but it varies. It varies. I think people are a lot more, they're busy in the afternoons. They, on, they already know what happened. Right. Excuse me, they're on their way home. But... Um, Facebook uh, is, is somewhat usable. Uh, I've learned to use that. Uh, you can get a quick reaction that way a lot of times. Or a barometer that you may not be getting on the phones. You get a barometer as to who's listening and what they think about it. I was going to ask you that, how social media had changed the way you do your job or how social media has changed your relationship with the audience. For the most part, the, the relationship has been good. Uh, I don't care for somebody who will hide behind a keyboard and say something nasty right. or something mean just right. because they want to. Uh, do it and I'll delete you and I'll ban you. Yeah. Um, and I don't have any qualms about that. That's not why it's there, right. I don't think. Not, right. not our radio station website. And I don't even fool the one they gave me. I don't, <laughs> you don't need to know what I'm doing all day long. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't none of your business. <laughs> but you ain't got to be nastier or mean when you disagree with something. Yeah. And if you are, I just get rid of you. We don't yeah. need that. As you look back on your career, give me a high point. What, what, what's something you got to do that, that you look back on and go, wow. Oh, man. High point would have been flying with the blues. Uh, Chuck Watson, back in 86, I flew the number seven jet in the back seat in the Billy Bob suit. God, that was fun. Yeah. Most fun I've ever had. I've got to uh, do a show from a hot air balloon, a blimp. I rode various airplanes and helicopters. You know I love planes. Right, right. Um, having my little boy on the air, 
He's been on with me a few, when he was small. Right, right. You know, that was fun. He told me he's going to be an astronaut, bring me a rock back from Mars. I didn't even know he wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> but the kids are always fun. Yeah. I always enjoy the kids. Yeah. Um, Billy Bob was fun. Uh, I've done some crazy things in the name of trying to gain a listener or two. Yeah. But, uh, What's the craziest thing you've ever done, you think? Put on that stupid dress at the Beulah Sausage Festival. <laughs> uh, the Confederate Railroad came in. Well, there it is. Ain't that fun? <laughs> now, let me tell you about that thing real quick. That's Dolly Parton wig, and I got a cigar in my mouth, and some fishnet hose, and some gold pumps. <laughs> and I'm in my mid 50s. This is two years ago. They did a song 20 something years ago called Trashy Women. Yep. They came to Pensacola. They were at the fairgrounds. I had the idea to do a dress. I put it on the air, this lady named Nancy, sewing by Nancy. She lives over in Lake Charlene. She says, come by and get fitted. She picked out this snake gold skin dress with the fringe and put some, uh, you know, she patted it where it needed to be. <laughs> and I wore that thing on, came up from behind, and they didn't know I was coming on stage. And uh, the lead singer, Danny Shirley, just about lost it. And the two girls that were dancing pulled me right in. We had a ball. <laughs> so a couple of years ago, Yancey Thomas, Yancey McNair over at Beulah says, I'm thinking about bringing them to the Beulah Sausage Fest. I said, you get them and I'll put the dress back on. So it was on. <laughs> the dress still fit. <laughs> the dress still fit. So that's, it's crazy, but everybody was laughing and having a good time, so why not? Yeah. You know, you, you, you've always been real involved in the community, and one of the things I wanted to bring up, you got into racing cars for a while, didn't you? How did that I come did, about? man. Well, they had the media races out at Five Flags for a few years, and I won four out of five of them. It just, Stevie Mercer gave me my first one, and then, uh, you know, a couple other guys gave me a car. And then, uh, you know, I got my own, and you see what happens sometimes. <laughs> uh, that thing looked real good just moments before they took that picture. <laughs> but uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Bo Resmondo and Sonny Holland came to me one night, and they said, you know, we know you love to race. How would you like to race a car? I said, I'd like to race a bomber. And they said, we don't do bombers. We race sportsmen. That's a small block 350, and it's just a regular race car. You have to hold on to it. And uh, I went and got me some sponsor, and I did it for four years. I finished top five in points for two years. Is that right? That ain't bad for an old redneck country <laughs> disc jockey guy. <laughs> Have fun. What happened in that picture with the wreck? Actually, we had a kid. Uh, this was a Sunday race. We usually race at night. That race uh, was a Sunday because Friday night got rained out, and there was a kid, a young kid, first race. He had spun. He was sitting looking right at us coming out of turn four the wrong way. And me and another guy tried to avoid him, and we got together, and I wrecked him, and wrecked myself. <laughs> are you out of the race? But we didn't hit the kid. Did, well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Are, are you out of the racing business now? Yeah, I got in a pretty bad wreck at the Derby a couple of years ago and uh, hit the wall wide open, turned 90 degrees, hit the inside wall wide open, came up like this and bam. And when I got done, I said, thank you, Jesus. I appreciate that. I'm good. And then I was mad. And I saw my little wife coming across the track and she was mad. And she said, uh, I just wish you'd stop this. You scare me. And I says, she don't ask me for much. So I said, okay. I'm done. I had fun. Not everybody gets to do that. I've yeah. been a lucky man. Yeah. That is, that is a lot of fun. When you, when you hit like that, were you in, in that particular class, are you wearing the Hans device? And no, but I got five-piece harness on and a pretty good helmet. It's just, you know, the Lord was looking out for me. I should have got hurt. Yeah. I've never been even bruised, though. Yeah. And I have hit that wall and hit other people lots of time. But it was fun. It's something I wanted to do, yeah. and I got the opportunity to do it with some guys who are pretty dadgum good. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I even beat them one time, so that wasn't bad. Good deal. One time. I've got about three minutes or so left. Uh -huh. As you look ahead, what's what's in store for Marty White? I don't um, I don't really know. I'm not going to do the radio thing too much longer. I've got 40, 41 years under my belt now, and I feel like I've made a difference in the community, uh, not being boastful or nothing, but uh, I, I've been... Uh, I've, I've covered all the goals I wanted to. Uh, I take care of my wife, my child. House is paid off. Cars are paid off. I'm ready to go fishing and hunting. As far as doing anything else, I don't know. I know I'm going to take six months off when I finally pull the plug. I'm going to fish and hunt, and I'm going to Colorado with a buddy of mine. I've always wanted to go out there, but couldn't because we were in a ratings period. Right. I'm going to go hunt elk and mule deer and bear and maybe slip up to Wyoming and catch some brown trout in a stream and hide. <laughs> <laughs> hide from the public. <laughs> the people who have helped me out so much, yeah. you know, sometimes you just have to get away. Yeah. But that's what I'm going to do, and shoot, I don't know. I want to retire young enough so I can enjoy it. Yeah. Well, yeah. You'll be missed. Well, I appreciate you saying so.
you've uh, you've had a, a very successful career, and 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 like I say, it kind of goes back to relating to the community. And I know you've yeah. done a lot along the ways of uh, helping folks out from charitable standpoints and things of that nature. Well, you try to help out. That's what you're there for. You ought to do that first, and we'll take care of the rest of it. Yeah. If you do that, everything else will get taken care of. Yeah. Yeah, but I appreciate you bringing me in, man. I was tickled when you asked. I said, you know, after doing this that long, it's nice for somebody to, to recognize uh, your body of work, and especially coming from a friend and somebody I worked with years ago. That's nice. Well, I appreciate it, and yeah. and a lot of times people don't always know what goes on behind the scenes, and and just to share just a little bit. I mean, you were always very well respected within the broadcasting industry, and something we didn't get to talk about, I did want to bring up. At one time, you were considered probably the best in this area, if not even in the southeast, as far as voicing commercials, which is a true. Art Art within itself, and uh, yeah, got to do what he can to make some money. And do it, but you did a great job at it. Did you ever think yeah. about just doing that all the time? Yeah, and I might still one of these days. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. All the voices is about to go away. You know, one of these days. But some people like that too. So yeah, I don't know. I'd rather hunt and fish and forget about it for a while. <laughs> You'll miss it though after about a year. I'm sure I will. Yeah, you can't do this for that long and not. Yeah, but, Marty, advice some person either that's currently in the broadcasting business, maybe early in their career, or someone who aspires to be in the business. What hmm. advice would you have for them? Uh, minding that I'm still under contract, I'll be real quick here. Uh, <laughs> be yourself. Good Lord, be yourself. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Yeah. You know, talk to people and, and, and read like you talk. Yeah. Basically, that's it. Radio's a, a great medium. Just, you ain't nobody special. You just have a talent to say something in front of a microphone. So take advantage of it. Enjoy it. Treat people right, and they'll treat you right back. Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Just be yourself. Yeah, just be yourself. Don't try to copy others. No. It's too so, hard. Good luck. What a pleasure. Mine too. I enjoyed, enjoyed it, it, my friend. Thank you, buddy. Take good care of yourself. Best of luck to you and your family. And I will tell yours. Hello, too. I certainly will. Yeah. Marty White, uh, you've been listening to him for years on the radio all around Northwest Florida and appreciate him joining us on this edition of Conversations. By the way, you can hear Marty and his partner Lindsay Marie weekday afternoons on 102.7 Nash FM. And by the way, you can see some more of our broadcast online at WSRE.org slash conversations. I'm Jeff Weeks. Thank you so very much for watching. Hope you enjoy the broadcast. Take great care of yourself and we'll see you soon. Support for this program is provided in part by these corporate sponsors. And by viewers like you.